Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Second Unitarian Church. I am John Rice. Excuse me, I'll take this off. Uh, a member of the church board of trustees, and my pronouns are he and him. Today we are continuing to meet virtually using Zoom as well as in person at the Admiral and here at the 2U Sanctuary. We ask everyone's indulgence for the complica complications of a three-part service. We are glad you are here regardless of your mode of attending. In Zoom, you will notice a chat feed available where you can say hello, interact, and share your joys and concern when we reach that time in the service. You can also Zoom closed captioning through the live transcript option. When we would traditionally sing together and read things in unison, you are encouraged to do so as well. Even though you are either masked or on mute, our voices echo through the world so we will hear one another if we listen closely and sing with our full spirit. We're paying close attention to COVID recommendations. This could mean changes at any time, but for now we recognize that maintaining physical distance, even while masked, is an act of love and protection. The most recent information is on the Second Unitarian website. We especially welcome newcomers and visitors this morning. Finding a new community and making new connections can be challenging. Please know that we're excited to have you and look forward to getting to know you. If you are new to us today, you're welcome to note that in the Zoom chat or mention it in person during chats after the service. Our worship today is led by Reverend Jason Lydon, our settled minister, with Harris McKee as worship associate. Music is provided by Rosalind Hurwitz and Carl Kennedy, our acting director of music. Our time together requires a large group of people who make possible the worship, the music, and the technical production. They are listed in the order of service, and we thank them for their ongoing service to our congregation. I have a couple more announcements. Um, following our service today, we will be celebrating the ministry of our former director of faith development, Alicia Obando. Alicia gave years of service to our congregation and we are excited to have her ministry today. We are excited to honor her ministry today. Please stick around after service to participate in this joyous occasion. Our monthly social, social justice ministry team meeting is this Tuesday. That's this Tuesday at 7 p.m. over Zoom. All are welcome to come engage together as we create opportunities for us to take action together as a congregation. Jonah Bandurant and Barb Michael can answer any questions. Each year, our nominating committee puts forth a slate of candidates to fill important roles in church leadership, especially the board, church board. Now is the time to nominate someone you think would be great, including yourself, to serve in church leadership role. More details on that can be found in your order of service or by following the link in the chat if you're on Zoom. You can find more information and additional announcements in your order of service. I now welcome Harris to lead our call, our call to worship. We are a Unitarian Universalist congregation, a community of children, youth, and adults, a people of many beliefs and traditions found not by the specific list of things we believe, but the values we share. Whether you are joining us for the first time or for the thousandth time, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God some of the time, all of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. Whatever your race, whomever you love, whichever way you move in the world, however much money is in your pocket, you are welcome here. I invite you as you feel ready to take a breath in and out. 
As the music begins, let us enter into our service together. In just a moment, Harris at the Admiral and Ryan right here at, in our sanctuary will light our chalices and we do so this morning with these words from Ralph Waldo Emerson. We have a great deal more kindness than is ever spoken. The whole human family is bathed with an element of love like a fine ether. How many persons we meet in houses whom we scarcely speak to, whom yet we honor and who honor us. How many we see in the street or sit with in church whom, though silently, we warmly rejoice to be with. Read the language of the wandering eye beams. The heart knoweth. Would you light our chalices, please, Ryan? have it lit in our hearts burning brightly we are still figuring out the best ways to make the new flame work but it burns quietly inside Rosalind, would you lead us in our opening hymn
Thank you to Tom Clues for that beautiful cello accompaniment. Please join me in reciting our covenant. The words will be on your screen shortly. <clears throat> we covenant to build a community that challenges us to grow and empowers us to honor the truth within ourselves. We will be generous with our gifts and honest in our communication, holding faithful to a love that embraces both diversity and conflict. Called by our living tradition, we will nurture spirituality within a vision of the eternal, living out our inner convictions through struggles for justice and acts of compassion. Please join Rosalind Hurwitz in singing our congregational hymn, Spirit of Life. It's number 123. <laughs> Stir 
I want to welcome those who are young in age or young at heart to come and join me up in this area of the chancel, if you would like to. Uh, we, you can have a seat in the chairs or on the floor or on the steps right here. You are welcome to come and join me. We're going to do a little singing together this morning. Uh, not that leading singing is my job, that's really Carl's job. Uh, but I'm borrowing that job for a moment, for a little bit. Uh, but before we start our singing together, I'm wondering if you can tell me how many principles Unitarian Universalists have. Yes, Seven. Seven, Seven maybe eight. We're talking about an eighth these days, absolutely. Does anyone know what some of the seven are? What are some? Actually, I see you, Ben. Let's see if anyone else has an idea of what some of our principles are. Anyone know? Yeah. Treat others how you want to be treated. I think that's in there, in some words, absolutely. Yeah, Ben. Um, principle seven, interconnected web of life. Yes, interconnected web of life. Very correct. Anybody else remember what any of our seven principles are? They're hard to remember, right? And so there's a song that I learned when I was going to Sunday school that I am hoping that you might learn over the next few weeks and we'll practice together uh, and see if it can help you remember the principles. Like it helps me remember really just the first principle. I can never remember the other verses, but maybe you'll remember them better than I do. And so I have the words here and Carl's gonna play some music and I will sing it through. I'll sing one and then feel free to jump in whenever you feel like you kind of understand what's going on. And so Carl, tell me when I'm supposed to start. Okay, here we go. You use have principles. Here's number one. People are important, each and every one. That means me and that means you and people everywhere. Singing these are the things that we believe in. You use have principles. Here's number two. Treat people fairly and treat them kindly too. Be just, be fair, and care a lot in everything you do. Singing these are the things that we believe in. You use have principles. Here's number three. Our church is an accepting place where everyone is free. To grow in spirit, mind, and heart, acceptance is the key. Singing, these are the things that we believe in. You use have principles. Here's number four. Keep searching for meaning and truth forevermore. We have no creed, I grow my own. It grows along with me. Singing, these are the things that we believe in. You use have principles. Here's number five. Listen to your conscience when actions you decide. Democracy is the way of the free. The people are in charge. Singing these are the things we believe in. You use have principles. Here's number six. If we work to the, oops, there's a lot that we can fix. Our goal is world community with peace for everyone. Singing, these are the things that we believe in. You use have principles. Here's number seven. Respect the web of nature that we are living in. Everything's connected. You can't do just one thing. Singing, these are the things that we believe in. Beautifully done. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be reviewing up in kind of this part of church time. What are these seven principles that we are talking about as Unitarian Universalists? And what do they mean to us? And so I'm hoping that as you go about your Monday through Saturday, you might think, what would it be to use these principles to kind of guide how I'm living my life. How might I act differently if I'm thinking about these principles? So that's one of the things I'm hoping you would think about 
over the next couple of weeks. And we'll talk more about it and with Reverend Elizabeth as well. And now I invite everyone to sing our children off to class. Enjoy. Many thanks to the adults who joined in in singing as well. Hopefully those, that song can help you remember the principles uh, as well. Each year, we all make a commitment, a pledge to support the ministry of this, our church community. In addition to that contribution, each Sunday we take a collection so that we can share with those who are doing justice work well beyond our walls. While not all of us are able to be here together in person, you can still share your resources. And to make your contribution, you'll be able to follow the text prompts on your screen that you'll see in just a moment. For the month of February, we are sharing our plate with Firebird. And this morning, we'll hear some words from Moni Canson and see a little bit of a video. using the art of glass blowing and ceramics combined with group therapy. Community violence in Chicago is structural. It's about systemic racism and wealth inequity and that has created a safety gap impacting the children and the young people of Chicago the most. And Firebird is a powerful tool for healing. The space and the fire-based arts at the center of it is a circle of mutual care, where all learn from each other's full humanity and experience. Firebird offers employment to young people, trauma support groups, and art making to help people express things that might feel unspeakable. Participants learn together and co-create art and a renewed hope for the future. Please watch this beautiful video and give with your full heart. Thank you so much. I've seen the young people in our programs come into the studio in all sorts of states after navigating their lives that day. And they sit down at the bench or the torch or the pottery wheel and they're transformed. You can see it in their body language. Someone can come in in real distress and then they're laughing with their friends or dancing to the music or even just sitting calmly, just allowing themselves to be in that moment. Part of it is knowing they're in a safe space surrounded by people who they trust and who they know care about them. Part of it is just getting lost in the material and having an outlet for expressing thoughts that are sometimes too hard to voice. Focusing our mission to having a trauma-informed approach to art making has been a revelation. It's given us all a new lease on life a way of moving through the world and all our activity with empathy by meeting people where they're at. It has changed the way we operate. In this spirit, we have adopted a new identity, which needed a new name. We chose the Firebird to represent our rebirth through fire to overcome and regenerate. We use fire-based art forms, glass and ceramics, to reimagine and rebuild ourselves.
Now I invite you to join me in reading our operatory word. The words will be printed on your order of service and are on this will be on the screen shortly. This church is the community of ourselves. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to the life of this community, we affirm it and enable its participation in the larger world around us. The offering will now be generously given and gratefully received. invite you now, wherever it is that you are, to join me in the spirit of prayer or meditation. Let us begin by breathing together. Clearing your mind, letting the thoughts just pass through. Take some time to be quiet with yourself. We begin in thanks. Thankful for the breath in our lungs, the beauty of our earth, and the strength of this, our beloved community. We hold in our hearts those who care for family and ill health, those living with grief or chronic pain, those struggling with addiction or illness, seen and unseen. We are with you. For parents and teachers and all those whose primary spiritual practice is caring for children, we are with you. We pray for our neighbors in prison, for those who are struggling to stay afloat in the midst of poverty, we are with you. We pray for all those living in harm's way, we pray for our planet, and commit to work that will lead us away from the harms of climate chaos. As drums beat for war in Europe, as famine attaches itself to the people of Yemen, we pray that wisdom, compassion, and empathy guide the leaders of our world. May they and we be instruments of a just and lasting peace. Our lives are blessed by those who knowingly with curiosity and courage face their final days. For those struggling with fear and anxiety right now, we offer our prayers of comfort and care. For those who face the loss of a job 
financial resources and security right now. We offer solidarity and the commitment to share what we can. For those struggling with the impact of isolation, we promise to reach out with love. And to this, our shared silence across space, I invite you to speak the name of anyone you wish to lift up into the loving support of this community. With our deepest compassion, let us hold in our hearts those named and unnamed, those remembered and those forgotten. Let it be so, blessed be, and amen. This time I will light two candles, one representing the joys and celebrations we're experiencing, and another representing the concerns and sorrows we're holding. And as we return to our congregational ritual of lighting candles for our joys, concerns, sorrows, and celebrations, we want to continue to maintain our safety and comfort with each other. And so in the sanctuary, you are invited to come forward and get a candle from the usher or myself and light a candle at either side here. When you are finished, you are welcome to use the hand sanitizer to be able to feel clean and safe after lighting your candle. For our friends at the Admiral, I invite you to come forward and take a pebble from one, one bowl, hold it tightly, putting your energy into that stone, and then knowing your joys and sorrows to be shared by this community, let it go lightly into the other bowl. And for our friends on Zoom, I invite you to join us by sharing your joys and concerns in our chat window.
We hold these, our shared joys and concerns, close to our hearts. Harris, would you share our first reading, please? Our first reading is an excerpt from the essay, Healing Souls, Healing a Nation, by Unitarian Universalist theologian, Van Decke. Attention to the emotional abuse entailed in the current economic collapse reveals the theologic foundation of our mission work, feeling. As 19th century Unitarian transcendentalist, Margaret Fuller reminds us, what is done here at home in my heart is my religion. We do not think our way home to the heart of our religious faith. We are moved there by emotions, affections, moods, dispositions, and attitudes that have been transformed into personal experiences of regeneration and renewal. This is why we say that personal experience is the first reference for our faith. We feel transformed, re-engaged, and enlivened, not by a creed or a doctrine, but by a heartfelt experience. What occurs here at home in our heart is a foundational experience of our liberal religious tradition. 20th century religious ed educator, Sophia Lyon Foss, tried to remind us of this effective foundational fact of our liberal faith tradition in why we teach religion in an age of science. She notes the emotional impulses that urge humankind to be religious are a part of human nature everywhere and always. We truly need to be religious. We need to be religious because we are emotional souls. Our second reading this morning is two short excerpts from the book With Purpose and Principle, Essays about the Seven Principles of Unitarian Universalism. The first excerpt is from Reverend Marilyn Sewell, and the second from Reverend Richard Gilbert. The first principle is our foundation. It speaks of respecting others enough to never objectify and control them in the service of ideology, however precious. It encourages people to unfold according to their true and authentic nature, to live with integrity and according to their own heart's meaning. As Unitarian Universalists, we do not ask members to adopt any creed or doctrine. People are accepted as they are, whether they are Christians, Buddhists, Jews, humanists, atheists, or simply searching. Whether they are straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, whether they are socialists or Republicans, whether they are white or people of color, all have worth and dignity. All are welcome at the table. The first principle is human-centered. It implies that living on this earth is the proper focus of our time and attention. Heaven will take care of itself. Reverend Richard writes, the very name Unitarian Universalist suggests a strong ethical component. Unitarian implies the unity of all beings, binding us together in one human family. Universalist suggesting that our concerns are global in nature, and no one is to be excluded. Affirming and promoting justice, equity, and compassion in human relations articulates that tradition. I understand religion to be the, that core of ultimate meanings and values out of which we live our lives. Central to the meaning of being Unitarian Universalist is to be for others. Commitment to the service of life is a key expression of being a spiritual and ethical human being. Can we hear our anthem, please? Just a word about our anthem. It's by 
Haitian composer Werner Jägerhuber, who has a very un-Haitian sounding name. And appropriately for this theme, uh, he wrote this music and all of his music, uh, I believe, in an effort to sort of say to the world that uh, Haiti, the first black republic, deserves the same respect that every other country receives, and Haitian uh, traditions and religion deserve the same respect that any other uh, folk traditions and religion deserve. This is a lament to the Haitian goddess of love and motherhood, Erzali, from a parent who's concerned because there's a drought. So they're concerned that there will be enough to eat for their, their one child. What a gift. Thank you so much, Tom. While we are spending a lot of our time discussing the proposed eighth principle, I thought it might be helpful for us to revisit the other seven. It is the rare Unitarian Universalist who can name all seven principles, uh, and rarer still to get them in the correct order. I think maybe since we sang this new song that we're practicing today, you might be able to do it now, but I will assure you that before doing that, I could not, which is a little bit embarrassing uh, that as a minister of Unitarian Universalism, I cannot necessarily remember all seven of the principles in a row. But simultaneously with that embarrassment, I also have a little bit of pride. Because like most of you, I can recite our congregational covenant word for word. 
and I still remember the one from the congregation that I grew up in. I know all of the words to Spirit of Life, and there are other kind of memorized hymns and readings that kind of live around here in my head. And I'm a little embarrassed to not know all of the words to all of our principles. And yet, there's pride because I'm not necessarily supposed to know all of the words to each of the principles in order. The pride comes in when I remember that Unitarian Universalism is a creedless tradition. It is purposeful that our call to worship says that we come together not because of a specific list of things that we believe, but rather the values we share. If our church instituted a creed here at 2U, we would be breaking our promise, our historical and present day promise that there will never be a test of faith in order to be a Unitarian Universalist. We are not required to recite the Nicene Creed, not only because we do not believe the words, but because we are part of a free faith. This freedom leads some to misunderstand or even make jokes at our expense. One such joke, I think is my favorite, comes from The Simpsons. Uh, and some of you may know this joke, uh, as there are quite a few of them in The Simpsons, and it's even rumored that the creator of The Simpsons is a Unitarian Universalist himself. I sometimes misremember exactly all of the details of how this joke goes, so I had to look it up online so that I was clear. But in this particular episode of The Simpsons, Lisa goes up to an ice cream stand at the church fair. Reverend Lovejoy is serving ice cream. With great enthusiasm, Lisa looks at all the flavors, Blessed Virgin Berry, Command Mint, Bible Gum, and then Lovejoy, Reverend Lovejoy interjects, letting Jesus, letting Jesus, letting Lisa, excuse me, letting Lisa know that she could have a bowl of Unitarian ice cream. He hands her the bowl. She looks at the bowl and then looks back at Reverend Lovejoy. There's nothing there. She notes, with a bit of annoyance, exactly, Reverend Lovejoy responds. The scene ends there. But our absence of a creed does not, in fact, mean there is nothing here. You already know that, or you wouldn't be here. It's good to be able to laugh at ourselves, though, and to chuckle at the knowledge that we do religion differently. We often offer more questions than we do answers. The beauty, though, is that the searching for answers together is how we build community. And if we're going to go searching for answers together, then we need to have some guides to keep us connected and safe. This is what we mean when we say that we are a covenantal faith. We are not required to be here. We are not obligated to be here. We promise to be here and make promises to each other about how we are going to behave when we are here. Taking pride in what makes Unitarian Universalism different is not us saying that we are better than other religions. We need to challenge the elitist reputation that Unitarian Universalism can get. We can practice humility and be proud of who we are. It's a tricky dance to do, and yet I know that you can do it. Part of how we do so is by educating ourselves about our own faith and ensuring that we are open to a multitude of truths. Sometimes we won't be thrilled about what we learn, like what I shared a couple of weeks ago during our Reproductive Justice Sunday. But more often than not, I think you will appreciate knowing more about who we are, where we come from, and then be able to figure out where we are going together. As we dig into the principles together, I figured we should start at the beginning and go all the way through. We will cover one or two per Sunday, and if you have reflections you want to share or want others to hear about, 
I would love for you to email me and let me know if you want me to include them in sermons. The principles live in Article 2 of the UUA bylaws, and you can also always find them in your order of servants. The preamble, we covenant to affirm and promote, goes along with each one so that we know that these words are not words alone, but rather affirmations we are making and promises we are committing to promoting. Our first and I think easiest to remember principle affirms the inherent worth and dignity of every person. The Reverend Ellen Beth Cooper in her sermon on the first principle highlights the similarity of this principle with the values that cross religious traditions. You carry within you something ineffable, she writes, something that Christianity names being made in the image of God in which Buddhism names the potential Buddha nature of all people, and that which is expressed in the Hindu greeting, Namaste, that which is divine in me honors that which is divine in you. The choice of the word inherent is theologically important to us as Unitarian Universalists. We have a guiding principle that names humanity as having innate value and worth simply by being. It is not possible to earn your worth and dignity. It simply is. We are promising to recognize that worth and dignity in every person. And I don't know about you, but I fail at this principle all the time. Believing in it, simply believing that someone has inherent worth and dignity, I don't struggle there. Affirming it, though, promoting it, that's something quite a bit different. If I have to always behave as if someone has inherent worth and dignity, what happens when all I want to do is lean on my horn because the fool in front of me is not moving their car? Having spent most of my adult life doing abolitionist organizing, I know that I believe people who have caused harm should be held accountable in community rather than punished in a system rooted in white supremacy. One of the big questions, though, is where that community comes from. If somebody causes harm to somebody else, who is going to do the work of holding the person who caused harm accountable? For me, our UU principles help find an answer. Community is that gathering of people who promise to hold the values with one another. Community can cross neighborhoods or just be within one family. Communities can be large or small. The essential aspect to it is that community holds shared truths and values. When we look inward, assessing our shared values and truths, we begin with our first principle. Our first principle invites us to recognize that inherent goodness in each person. As Unitarian Universalists, we do not believe in original sin. Rather, we affirm that each person is born with original blessing. We do not need to agree on where that blessing comes from. For some of us, that blessing comes from God. For others, it comes from stardust in the universe. There are those who find that original blessing coming from the ancient goddesses of the earth. Where the blessing comes from is not what makes us Unitarian Universalists. Knowing it is there is what does. Our second principle reads, we affirm and promote justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Not only are people inherently worthy humans, they also deserve to be treated in a way that is just, equitable, and compassionate. How we go about enacting this principle is the subject of countless actions of immediate witness at General Assembly, numerous statements of conscience, and endless numbers of congregational justice groups around the country. Unfortunately, this human society of ours has given us plenty of injustices to engage with and take action to transform. 
If all of our human relations were already just, we would get to work on some radically different things. I actually think it's a bit of a fun thing to imagine. Take a moment to get lost in that imagination. How would your life be different if all human relations were just? Where we had achieved collective liberation, where systemic injustices were a thing of the past. It's a promised land that Dr. King talked about. It's the kingdom of God that Jesus talked about. It's the imagined worlds that Octavia Butler encouraged dreaming of. It's good to take moments to live in this imagined land because without our imagination, we will not know what we are trying to create. None of us have lived in a society where there was justice, equity, and compassion in all human relations. We've experienced moments spaces, places that embody that vision. We, excuse me, in order for this principle to be fulfilled and lived into, there's a lot of work for us to do. And we are promising to engage in a lifelong journey, a journey whose path has been taken by many before us, a journey on whose leadership and shoulders we stand upon. Justice and equity in human relations can call, to, <clears throat> can call us to very specific and tangible actions that end oppression based on race, gender, class, disability, etc. I wonder about the promise to ensure we practice compassion in human relations. What might that look like? How would you practice compassion with other humans in your lives? I know that I feel as though to you has been practicing exceptional compassion in relationship with me over the last six months. I could not feel more blessed to serve a more amazing congregation and I wish my experience was not the exception. In religious community, compassion often comes up with the word mercy. Many years ago, I got the words from the book of Micah tattooed on my side, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly. What might it look like for us as you use to love mercy, to practice compassion in human relations? The late, great Bell Hooks offers these words. For me, forgiveness and compassion are always linked. How do we hold people accountable for wrongdoing and yet at the same time remain in touch with their humanity enough to believe in their capacity to be transformed? If we affirm that everyone has inherent worth and dignity and we acknowledge that we are best served by creating human society rooted in justice, equity, and compassion, then how do we live our Unitarian Universalism best in our day-to-day -day lives? One of the big questions about the eighth principle is why do we need to add it? Isn't it already covered by the other seven? Part of my answer would, unsurprisingly, be another question. Why do we need the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh principle? These two principles we've reflected on today already seem like a whole lot of religion to practice. Yet I know that we have more weeks of reflection to do. I know that there are five more principles ahead of us because people did the work to create them and have them guide us in our faith. Our principles are not a creed. Our principles are meant to change and grow as we change and grow. Part of what I hear from the eighth principle is a call saying that there is more to be done. As we reflect on the rest of the principles together, I look forward to hearing what else you think needs to be done. Maybe an eighth principle isn't enough. Once we open the door to change, what else might we embrace? Let it be so.
and amen. Hoslin, would you lead us in our closing hymn? singing um now please rise uh, as you are uh, embody your spirit and sing we'll build a land and we have new words for it uh it's hymn number 121 and good they're right there okay on the screen
you to rest your hands upon your heart or clasp hands with those you're sharing your space with these days and hear these words of benediction from Theodore Parker. Be ours a religion which like sunshine goes everywhere. It's temple all space, it's shrine the good heart, it's creed all truth, it's ritual works of love is profession of faith, divine living. Let us do so together. Go in peace, beloveds.